This video was created by Vinylic Puma of Vinylic Puma Gaming. Hey guys, so for those of you that don't know, there is a new DLC for Fallout 4 that just came out, and it is called Wasteland Workshop. Uh, unlike I usually do, I figured I would go ahead and go over my opinions, uh, some of my thoughts, first impressions, and give you guys a quasi-review of the brand new DLC. So let's go ahead and we'll get into it. Now, uh, Bethesda, and this could just be my perception, but Bethesda has been somewhat tight-lipped about what this DLC exactly is. Uh, now, the Wasteland Workshop DLC is simply a collection of useful settlement building assets. Uh, unfortunately, there are no new quests, there are no new missions, and no new weapons that were added with this particular DLC. Now, on the one hand, while this DLC is only worth about like $5 or so in the US, I kind of think that that's fairly underwhelming. While many of the additions or new settlement building structures are designed to spruce the appearances of your settlements, uh, there are some useful assets that are featured in the Wasteland Workshop trailer and also in the Wasteland Workshop DLC. For example, there's the Fusion Generator, uh, which may look very familiar to you from the vanilla game. Uh, now, what this thing can do is it can provide 100 power to structures that require power, and this is leaps and bounds above the standard nuclear power generator uh, from the vanilla game. Uh, it's worth mentioning that this requires a science perk level of 4, so you're going to need to be like at least level 39, level 41 in order to even use this thing. Uh, now, there is also the decontamination arch, which removes all radiation damage damage from your character, regardless of how much radiation damage that you have. Uh, and this is significantly more useful as it requires only four power and no additional perk requirements. Uh, there are also other improved structures like the powered water pumps, which require four power. However, they can provide 10 water on land. And this is a lot better than the conventional water pumps uh, that can only produce like three water at a time and are on par and this wat new water pump is on par with the water purifier structure in terms of how much water it can produce. Uh, sadly, the water pump consumes more power, uh, where the water purifier consumes only like two power. Bethesda has also added garden plots, which allow you to plant crops on virtually any surface. Uh, as you can imagine, this is useful if you're trying to build a settlement near the Brotherhood compound uh, at the Boston airport. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that you can also build like uh, some additional new traps, like you can build some floor spikes, and you can also build the revolving saw blades, uh, which you might have seen if you watched the Wasteland Workshop trailer. Another interesting addition is the red and blue team arena platforms which allow you to have your settlers or captured creatures attack each other uh, provided you know what you're doing you can set up arena fights uh, for your own amusement uh, i do recommend you build an actual arena though as people will go hostile uh, if you don't. Without a doubt though, the biggest addition with the Wasteland Workshop DLC uh, are these powered cages that can be used to capture various creatures. Uh, you can capture some gunners, raiders, or super mutants. Uh, so far, you can capture and domesticate dogs, cats, Brahmin, Deathclaws, Mirelurks, Rad Scorpions, Rad Stags, Yao Guai, Mutant Hounds, Mole Rats, and more. Um, now, some of the creatures will require a beta wave emitter to be constructed, and it specifically, if you want to know, Death Claws do require uh, this beta wave emitter. Uh, now, to construct the beta wave emitter, you will need both level 1 and both the Wasteland Whisperer perk and the Animal Friend perks. And to have both of these, uh, you're going to need a charisma score of 9. So far, the most powerful creature I've captured is a Mythic Death Claw, uh, which, for those of you that don't know, is the strongest Death Claw variant currently available in Fallout 4. It is also worth mentioning that the creature creatures you've captured, provided they can attack, uh, they will provide a de an additional defense rating to your settlement once they've been released from their cages. Now you can also capture some raiders, gunners, or even super mutants. However, these enemies cannot be domesticated and will always be hostile to you and your other settlers. Uh, so if you do decide to let them out, 
you will probably have to kill them. Now the way the capture process works is that you simply build the trap at a settlement, uh, you provide power to it somehow, and then wait up to one in-game week in order for whatever you're trying to catch to appear in that cage. Um, now as you can imagine, it takes forever for this process to work, and this is where I'm going to start my semi rant uh, and kind of criticize the Wasteland Workshop DLC. Now. The way the creature capture process works does make sense to me, and actually, um, in a way, I'm fine with it. It's just, it seems like it's the most boring thing that Bethesda could have done. Now, originally, I imagined that Wasteland Workshop would have had a set of Radiant Quest missions where you would meet some kind of NPC with a vertibird, and the two of you would go on hunting expeditions to capture these creatures to either tame or kill them for their meat and, like, hide or whatever. Uh, and, and it would really have been incredible to hop into a vertibird with a giant harpoon gun or a massive tranquilizer gun and shoot it at the larger animals that you're trying to hunt uh, and capture and tame for use in your settlements or for whatever you want to do with them. Honestly, I think this DLC is sort of a letdown and for the most part, I would say that this DLC would really only be useful for PS4 and Xbox One owners. Uh, and this is because some of the things added here have been accomplished by the Fallout 4 PC modding community already. Uh, for example, there are already PC mod alternatives to the vanilla structures that provide power to your settlements. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the Fusion Core Generator didn't already exist as a PC mod. There are also PC mods that allow you to build with Brotherhood of Steel assets. For whatever reason, um, no Brotherhood, Gunner, or Institute building assets are added with the Wasteland Workshop DLC, and in my opinion, that is truly a missed opportunity, because who wouldn't want to build a settlement with a functional private vertibird that you can use to fast travel all around the Commonwealth, or, or at the very least, you could have had the ability to create a Brotherhood of Steel type bunker. Now it could be just that the mods that I have installed or something, or maybe this is a problem that's exclusive to the PC version, uh, but I must say that I'm experiencing a lot of problems operating terminals uh, to release creatures from cages. Now, this could just be an oversight I've had, and there's some other way to open the cages, uh, but currently I've resorted to damaging the cages to release whatever is inside. Uh, PS4 and Xbox One users may or may not have the same experience. Uh, another thing that is worth mentioning is that if you're good at manipulating or using the PC console commands, uh, you can already perform a lot of the staged fights already. Uh, you can even set an NPC's enemy factions. Uh, you can make it either allied to you or enemy to you uh, or just whatever you want. And my point is, is that you don't need the red or blue arena tiles to even do this. Now, granted, using the red and blue arena tiles is definitely more quote unquote immersive. Uh, shout out to MXR mods there. But now for the big question. Is it worth paying $5 for? Now, in my opinion, and like I said earlier, this update is going to be the most useful for PS4 and Xbox One players, since a lot of the things featured here are already possible with mods on the PC version of Fallout 4, um, and they aren't possible on consoles until this DLC came out. Uh, now, I would say if you've got the Season Pass already, it is a nice update to the game, and I could see some of these features and building structures that were added, uh, they would be really useful in Fallout 4's upcoming Survival Mode update, especially since you can't use console commands there at all. That said, if you don't have the Season Pass, or you play primarily on the PC version, and you don't really care about Survival Mode, uh, I don't think it would be a big deal if you skipped this particular DLC. Uh, personally, I would say if we had a DLC like this that was just added a bunch of like high quality weapons to the game, uh, similar to how the Gunrunner DLC from New Vegas did, uh, I might buy that, especially if it was $5 and added 10 to 15 new weapons or so. And the reason I mention that is because those that like the settlement building mechanics in Fallout 4 may feel the same way about the Wasteland Workshop as I would about a possible Gunrunner 
Gunner, Gun Runner like DLC for Fallout 4. It's also worth mentioning that Bethesda is also working on that survival mode update, and from what I've been able to tell, it seems like they're putting a lot more effort into that than they did this DLC. And what's nice about that is that looks like it's going to be a free update. So you're basically going to get an amazing free update in this new survival mode that's been overhauled. Um, and I think that's great. Uh, as one more thing before we go here, uh, in case you're wondering if we will get another DLC like this, uh, I did look up the files on the PC version, and it appears that the DLC is labeled as, quote, DLC Workshop 01.ESM. Uh, now, keep in mind, this is speculation on my part, but it is possible there will be another Wasteland Workshop DLC further on down the road. Uh, so we may see a DLC Workshop 02.ESM later on. It's also worth mentioning, along with the survival update, uh, Far Harbor is going to come out next month. And that is supposedly the big DLC that Bethesda is hyping up. So I'm okay with getting this DLC right now if we get something incredible uh, in like a couple weeks or so. Anyway guys, that's gonna pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like. As always, take care and I'll see y'all next time.